Yo, happy Easter, not happy Passover. Happy Easter. Uh, Jesus is alive, and this is the gospel that we must believe to go to heaven. Jesus is God, the Father, who was manifest in the flesh as the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And he went to the Jews, his own people, and they rejected him. Even though he was sinless, they put him on the cross, and that's where he died for the sins of the world. He was buried, but then he rose on the third day, and he was seen alive by his witnesses, rejoice evermore. If you believe that today, you can go to heaven. Believe it from the heart. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So I heard someone say happy Passover, and it's Easter. Um, Passover and Easter are two different occasions. Uh, look here in Numbers 28, 16. And in the 14th day of the month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the 15th day of this month, is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. So those are the days of unleavened bread after the 14 days of Passover. So Passover already passed over. Um, Easter is in scripture. Um, so again, uh, so Easter is the actual, uh, you know, right word. So if your Bible says Passover, uh, please message me and we can kind of talk more about that because there that's an error and there's other errors in your book as well but it should say easter easter comes up one time in the all of scriptures as you see one verse found one match and when he had apprented him he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him attending after easter to bring him forth to to the people so again um I just wanted to show you that today and preach that gospel uh, of your salvation. It says right here, for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So it says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So. We've been created new in Christ Jesus unto good works. We can't produce good works on our own. So, and we must do the work of God, which is to believe on the one that he has sent. So that's what it says right here in John. Let me pull it up for y'all. John 6, 28. Right? So it says... Labor not for meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give you. For him have God the Father sealed. So we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It says, then said unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. So that's the work of God right there. Believe in the gospel is the work of God. So do the work of God. Um, what's the will of the Father? Right here. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will. See, the man, Christ Jesus, had his own will. But he came to do the Father's will, not his own will. He said, for I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the will, and this is the Father's will, which have sent me. That of all which he have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. So that's the will of the Father, is that we believe on him and that he raises up at the last day. So again, we're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise as soon as we believe. Amen. Right here it says, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel, your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the person's possession, unto the person's possession, unto the praise of his glory. So we're getting inheritance from who? Our Father. But what do we must do first? We must believe, right? Um, let me show you right here, John 1, 12. So if you want Jesus to be your Father, it says right here, 
He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So what's the name? It's Jesus. No other name can save you. What does it say right here? In Matthew 20, it says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto Mary thy to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is conceived of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. And um, he, he, he got the name before being conceived in the womb. So right here, Luke 2, 21, and when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So how could that be? Before he was even conceived, he was called Jesus? Why? It's because Jesus came in his father's name. Jesus. The name of the father is Jesus. John 5, 43. It says Jesus. Oh, excuse me. John 5, not John 6. John 5. Forty-three. It says, "I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive." So believe on the Father's name, which is Jesus. And they said, "What go ye therefore, baptizing them in the name of the Father." That's singular. In the name, singular of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So the name of the Father is Jesus. The name of the Son is Jesus. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. They went ye, they went ye baptizing in what name? Acts 2, 38, it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, they were saved before he said, then said unto Peter. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart. That's when they were saved and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what should we do? They were already saved. So what do we do now as believers? He preached to them, Jesus. He says, therefore, let all the house of Israel surely that God have made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. So right here, this is. This Jesus have God raised up, wherefore we are all witnesses. So he saw no corruption. His his flesh did see corruption, but um, his soul was not left in hell. So he's seeing this before. He's seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ. So, amen, this is, this is Easter. Let's celebrate the resurrection of Christ. He is alive. He died on the cross, but he rose on the third day. After being rejected by his own, his own received him not. And uh, he's both Lord and Christ. He was made both Lord. He was made both Lord and Christ. His name is above all names. Um, the Father is in the Son. That's how you get the Christ. You can't if you deny the Son, you deny the Father. If you deny the Father, you deny, you deny the Son. So he preached to them, and only when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart. No, so why? So did the repentance save them, or no? It was them being pricked in the heart. That's what saves them. Why? Because Romans ten. It says what? Man believeth with the heart. For for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him should not be ashamed. For there is no difference between between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For, whos, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, 
and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this is how you obey the gospel is by believing the report. The report is that Jesus is God, the father, and he manifests himself in the flesh as Jesus Christ, the son of God. And he went to the Jews where he was rejected by his own. The Jews rejected him, his own people. And they put him on the cross as a sinless, just man. And he died on the cross for the sins of the world. And he was buried. And three days and three nights later, he rose on the third day. And he was seen alive by his witnesses. If you believe that report, then that's how you obey the gospel. By believing that report. So last thing I'll show you here. All right, so it says, uh, for the gifts and calling of God, right? For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So this is as concerning the gospel. They are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So the gift of eternal life, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, less any measurables. So the gifts of God are without repentance. So he won't halt. He won't change his mind. He won't go another direction. None of those things when it comes to the gift of eternal life. So what must we do to be saved? Acts 16, 30 and 31, it says, and brought them out and says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Very clear, right? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So last point, and I promise, uh, you know, hit me up if you got any questions or drop a like, comment, whatever you want to do. But most importantly, believe the gospel to obey it, believe it. And that's how you're saved. Guarantee. It says, for if Abraham were justified by works, he have worth to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord will not impute sin because we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise in our spirit. The flesh is not saved. The spirit is saved. And we can see how Paul said in Romans 7 that, you know, dwelleth no good thing that is in my flesh. So, so he knew that no good thing dwells in his flesh. He says right here, now then, now then is it, now then it is no more that I do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. So Paul's confirmed there was sin dwelling in him and he's our apostle. So what does that say for you? We all have sin dwelling in our flesh. That is in the flesh dwelleth no good thing. And he says right here for that, which for that which I do, I allow not. So the things he do in the flesh, his spirit allow not. For what would, for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. So why? Because this, the, 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 the sin is in his flesh. And uh, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sowed under sin. So again, he's talking about the flesh, the spirit is saved. He says, oh, wretched man that I am, not oh, wretched man that I was, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He said, our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So he says, but I see another law of my members warning against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So sin is in our members. We will sin to the day we die. So look, 
I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Why? Because sin dwelleth in the flesh. Sin dwelleth in him. So again, we need to walk in the spirit. Put on the whole armor of God. That's Ephesians 6. Right? So walking in the spirit, reading your word, praying for the saints, praying for the church, and uh, preaching the gospel, and all of those things. So and, and, and enduring uh, the temptation of sin. Right. Don't fall to sin. But there's if you say what you if you say you're without sin, you're making you're calling God a liar. So let's be justified by believing because Romans three says that we're the just he, that he is the justifier of him that believe it. So that's all we can do to be saved. So right here to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just. And the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is, excuse me, where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. So this is the truth right here. All right. So believe that truth. Believe that Jesus is your savior. You know, you need to receive him by believing. Um, Jesus is God manifesting the flesh. He went to the Jews, his own people, and they rejected him. They received him not. So receive him by believing. They received him not. Um, he was sinless. He was just when he died on the cross for the sins of the world. He was buried, but he rose on the third day and he was seen alive by his witnesses. So rejoice evermore. If you believe that, hallelujah. Happy Easter, not happy Passover.